Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 7th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. And if you take a close look here, you can see that marine there. It's supposed to all the way into the Puget Sound, down through the Portland metro area as well. Much cooler this morning there. Nice cool down last night. I appreciated that from Mother Nature there. If you look close, you can see Mount Rainier here, though, still towering above that marine layer. Check out the Olympic Mountains peeking out above, and you can see the individual details here of some of the valleys here up into the Olympic Mountains there. Now, if you look off to the northeast here, you you can see some smoke across BC, the Rockies, down through Idaho, Montana there. And if we look up a bit further, you can see where that smoke is originating here across some of British Columbia and Alberta, continuing to pump off the smoke as we go. And as we scroll through here this morning, there was a little bit of convection there popping out. This is a lightning detection map here, and you can kind of see that thunderstorm pop up there. Kind of uh, going to be what's going on here over the next few days across some of British Columbia, maybe the North Cascades, and even down across Oregon, isolated dry thunderstorms are popping possible yet again today and tomorrow. We'll take a look at these details. We'll take a look at the extended forecast coming up. How long are we going to stay hot? How close is that trough that we've been watching off into our future going to get? This is looking at Paradise Mount Rainier. Just some high clouds. Look like the snow patch is gone there, but a nice day out across the higher terrain. You're not dealing with that marine layer up there. This is the virtual rail fan out here. So you guys can see that um, on YouTube here. Go ahead and subscribe to these guys. You can see uh, some of their cameras. They've got them all over the nation here. I've been working with some of these good folks here and we're going to put a weather station up on the Willapa Hills here. So this is an area across southwest Washington, uh, you know, up over 3,000 feet and it should be a really nice wind run up there. And when we get those big wind storms, we should get some impressive wind speeds up there. So we're working on setting up a weather station up there. I'll let you know more about that as those details come in. So recreating in the mountains, keep an eye on the sky. National Weather Service Spokane talking about this. Northeast Washington, some of the North Cascades. And not a big chance of thunderstorms, but there could be some isolated thunderstorms. And some of these could uh, start some fires here as well each afternoon and evening. This is looking at that isolated dry thunderstorm potential, mainly across eastern Oregon, clipping northern uh, California there as well. And again for tomorrow, this is the convective outlook. Again, it includes, uh, includes Seattle and the Puget Sound here but i would not worry about the thunderstorms there i know there's being a little bit careless here maybe with the outline of their drawings but this is day two again mainly cascades east and day three rinse and repeat as you can see this is Seattle yesterday. Still a pretty warm day out there. 83 degrees for Seattle at 7 degrees above average. No precipitation in sight. We'll take a look at those details though here coming up in a bit. Spokane looks like they're a day behind there. 87 on the 5th of July there. Average high for this time of year is 82 there for Spokane, but it's been cooler than Seattle the previous two days, the 4th and the 5th. They might have beat us there yesterday though. This is looking at Portland. You can see we continue to stay warm here through mid-July coming up here, and we've got a trough around but these troughs are pretty weak this time of year and they don't have that much of an impact. It's kind of more or less a cat and mouse game of how much onshore flow are they going to bring here and how many thunderstorms are they going to bring for some of the higher terrains. So we'll look at that in some detail here coming up. Seattle, you see the similar picture here on the GFS. This is looking at the air quality index. We've cleaned things out a bit here across some of western Washington, Oregon. Uh, Cascades East, a little bit worse air quality there. More of that smoke is filtered down into the region. And you can see where that smoke's originating there up across British Columbia there in some portions of Alberta. Now, this is looking at the GFS. We looked at this yesterday as well. This is last night's run versus yesterday afternoon's run. 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. There's... Alaska, Washington, Oregon here. Now, if we put this into motion, you'll see the kind of trough hanging around here, bringing the thunderstorm potential for many of the higher trains, cascades off to the east and mainly across British Columbia. And as we go through about hour 111, you see fairly decent agreement here. You can see a little bit of change in that trough, uh, the shape of it out there anyway. And then you see the GFS is kind of having a hard time waffling back and forth. Stronger trough offshore here. A little bit of better heights actually, though. It's in turn kind of builds the ridging here a little bit more. So you can see the difference also in the big high forming over the desert southwest and over California down here also. And it keeps bringing this tropical system on the southern periphery of that. But if we go off into the extended here, you can kind of see the disagreement each model run is having with itself different positions of that high across the southwest here and this would really have big impacts here on just how much onshore flow we're getting across much of the region here so something to watch right now and pretty low confidence as we go on in through the extended forecast we're looking at 300 hours out right now so this is purely fantasy but we'll look at the european here in the in a moment as it's also showing a trough out here as well 
So there's something to it. This is the European ensemble mean it versus itself. Yesterday afternoon versus yesterday morning. Put it into motion. You see the trough hanging around. Nothing new there. And then the next one here. And this is what all eyes are on to see just how this next trough develops here. And the ensembles, you know, these are averaged out and smooth here. But you can see there is some uh, differences here on the height across the southwest here. And sometimes this can build up some heights here and bring us warmer than normal conditions here across the Pacific Northwest. But as you can see, it's kind of showing this troughing here off our coastline. Not too big of a signal right now, but it's going to have big impacts here on just how much onshore flow we're getting. Now, this is looking at the European last uh, yesterday afternoon uh, ensemble control, which is actually deterministic now, but we can look out um, 15 days on this. But if we scroll out ahead here, 24-hour precipitation totals, you can kind of see as we go that a lot of this precip across BC is going to be in the form of thunderstorms and just some of the scattered nature of some of these storms here and then you can see if we get into fantasy land something comes across the region here we're not going to put any stock into that just yet right now anyway but for the most part until then cascades east <clears throat> excuse me uh, british columbia and watch out for those isolated dry thunderstorms and some of these thunderstorms you know aren't dropping a lot of precip here so they could be starting fires here as well this is looking at the composite reflectivity the nam 3km we put this into motion during the day today you can see some of that activity across the north cascades and starting to bubble up here across oregon not a lot of precipitation here so any lightning strike has the potential to start some fires now we're scrolling through saturday you see the redevelopment of these thunderstorms here across some of the cascades can't rule out a thunderstorm there as well and again not much precipitation then the nam shows this feature moving up saturday night into sunday morning across the cascades here as well the herd didn't pick up on that near the end of its run here but we'll watch that again mainly cascades east as this general troughing is around the area and can kick up these thunderstorms here uh, during the summer months this is lightning flash density potential on the herd the high resolution rapid refresh at 12z it runs out 48 hours every six hour it runs out 48 hours so you can see the uh, lightning development there across the North Cascades, across some of the Southern Oregon there as well, British Columbia. And as we go through Saturday, you'll see them redevelop there across the afternoon hours there. Uh, you know, mainly Sh Lake Chelan North, but you can't rule out a thunderstorm across some of the Cascades as well. But again, not dropping much precip here. So those have some fire start potential there down across Oregon also. And that's why they have that isolated dry thunderstorm potential down there. Now we're going to look at in the future a little bit here. This is the European Ensemble. And this goes well off into the future here and this goes all the way out into mid-august and you just look at how dry the west coast of north america is much more activity here across bc and not much for seattle even as far out as we're going we're going over 1100 hours out here and just showing us being clipped by some systems here at some point possibly but not a lot of precipitation pretty typical here for the west coast of north america one of the driest spots in north america during the summer months now this is looking at the nam uh then sorry this is the the national blend of models and we have the daily max two meter temperature here and you can see for today up towards 80 for seattle again a nice warm here across the willamette valley up towards you know just a little bit above average maybe for this time of year but you see eastern washington pretty downright hot some hundreds showing up there saturday sunday monday tuesday kind of bouncing around just a little bit above normal temperatures for seattle not too bad. No major heat wave coming up here. We do have that trough, which is going to be bringing some semblance of onshore flow here. Not going to allow us to warm up too much, but you can see these are above average temperatures here for a lot of the area here. So no big heat dome, but not below average as well. And this is looking at 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook. You can see the average for this time of year. And you can see we are in these probabilities for above average conditions here. So Spokane, Boise, Portland and Seattle by June 16th. Seattle's averaging 78 degrees for their average high. Now looking at six to 10 day precipitation probability. Uh, this is starting to creep up across Oregon, even towards the Seattle Metro here as well. And you can see the above average would include some of the higher terrain. There was some of that thunderstorm activity, some hit and miss nature of those storms. This is, uh, we've been looking at this the last couple of days. This is a new forecast out from the European July 1st. And it does show that we are headed towards that strong El Nino, something we'll be watching here over the next few months and we're probably really close to moving into moderate conditions as we speak already and this is the cfs <clears throat> excuse me and we're going on into probably a strong el nino here as well how long we will stay there we just don't quite know yet and we're almost into moderate as we speak 
So anyway, yeah, checking out the Wallapa Hills there. I may be putting up a weather station there. That should be interesting. They do have a live signal there, so we'd be able to access that data, you know, 24-7. So looking forward to that, and we'll probably get going on that here in the next few weeks. But anyway, yeah, uh, pretty interesting day out there today. You know, going to get some thunderstorms across some of BC here, already kicking some off this morning, it looks like. And we'll see how much we burn back this marine layer. It always has a big impact on just how much we warm up during the day time hours but you can see a lot of eastern washington oregon already getting some nice sunshine there you probably see that smoke especially during the sunset as well kind of makes for that orange hazy sky kind of enhance the sunset pretty dramatically as well but yeah check out the goes 18 satellite imagery here if you want to see some of these nice images and this marine layer pushing in on a daily basis here at least to the coastline in most cases but anyway um yeah so click like subscribe uh keep leaving some comments below the comments seem positive here on youtube uh glad to see it channel's doing well you guys make this all possible and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow